for such a long time, I had the most chaotic file management system that looking back on my old work, it's like sorting through a mess of random stuff. Things are missing. I can't find old shoots. I don't know where anything is. It's a disaster. Hi everybody, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And today we're talking about my file management system. File management might not be the sexiest component of photography, but it is definitely necessary. It is definitely something that I have come to love because it makes my job so much easier and I want to teach you how I do it. So hopefully you can take something from my workflow and bring it to your workflow to make your life a little bit easier. So let's jump into my computer and look at my process. All right, so here we are on my desktop. I have two finder windows open. You'll see on the left is my working drive and on the right is my SD card. I have several drives here, as you can see, one's for personal work, one is for my work for the opera, one's a backup drive for all my client work, and one is a working drive. All of these drives, except for the working drive, are regular hard drives. I actually use the Lassie Rugged drives, those orange hard drives that you've seen. I use those for um, these drives. Anything that I'm actually working off of, I use my working drive, which is an SSD drive. I highly recommend you use an SSD drive if you are editing files directly on your drive as it will just speed up your workflow. It'll make your life so much easier. So the first thing I do when I'm ready to import my files from my camera to my computer is I create a new folder on my working drive. So I do this by saying right click, new folder, and then I create a folder with this folder structure. I start with the year and then the month and then the date then a description of what the type of photo shoot is. So portraits, um, couples, weddings, in this case, I'm gonna to say together. And then I'm going to add the client's name. Great, so now I've created my main folder. Now, just a quick note here, if you use Capture One, you can't actually use these vertical bars to separate the components of the folder name. For some reason, Capture One can't read those files, so you should use underscores. If you're using Capture One, just keep that in mind. It's crazy, it's weird, it drives me absolutely nuts, but for whatever reason, Capture One can't read it, so just use underscores in the place of these vertical bars. Okay, so now we've created our main folder. And inside this main folder, we are going to have several subfolders. Now, since I do this the same way every time, I've created a shortcut for myself and I've added my subfolders here in the photo folders folder. So these are just empty folders. It's just a folder structure that I've created. Capture, selects, Lightroom, export, and in the export, I have high res and I have low res. So I'm just going to copy all of these folders. I'm gonna say, Command A to select them, Command C to copy. I'm gonna go back to our main folder that we just created. I'm going to say Command V to paste. And now I have my main folder and I have all of my subfolders and I'm ready to import my files from my SD card onto my working SSD drive. So now I come over here to this tab over here on the right. This is my SD card, EOS Digital. I use a Canon camera, that's what this is, EOS. I open my folder and here are all my files from my photo shoot, okay? So these are all the raw files. Now, typically when I shoot, I always format my card, my memory card. That gives me a clean base to start from. It minimizes the chance of corruption. And also when I bring the card into my computer, I know that everything on it is from the photo shoot that I just had. So I can just say Command A and bring over all the raw files into my capture folder. So I always bring over everything from my memory card from that photo shoot, all of the raw files into the capture folder. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna make like a random selection of photos um, because we don't need to copy over everything. I've already, you know, I've already finished this photo shoot, so I don't need to actually do this, but I'm just gonna show you what I would do. So typically I would select everything. In this case, I'm just gonna select a few just to keep it simple, and we're gonna move everything over. So just imagine we've moved all of our files from our SSD card onto our SSD drive. So now they're all existing in the capture folder. Great. Our job with that is done. Now number two is selects. 
I use Adobe Bridge to make my selects because it's included with the Adobe Suite. Some people use Photo Mechanic. You can use whatever works for you. Bridge is okay and um, it's worked for me, so that's what I use. So here we are in Adobe Bridge. Um, I'm going to navigate to my working drive. I'm going to navigate to the folder that we just created and to my capture folder. And here we can see all of our files, okay? So if I click on these, we can see the photos from the photo shoot. Now, typically this would have everything in it. Um, and these are just a few from that photo shoot. So maybe I'll select um, a few of these. So I'll press spacebar to get a better view of these. I like this one. I'm going to say command one to give it one star. I'm gonna go through here. Um, I was doing some motion blur stuff with these. I don't think any of my favorite ones are in this little selection that we made, but um, we'll go with uh, this one kind of fun. Okay, so just for the purposes of this video, let's say that we've starred all of our selected images. We want to just move those selected images into our selects folder. So we go up here to create a filter, show one or more stars because we've only starred the images in our capture folder that we want to select. So in this case, it was just these two photos. And I'm going to say Command A to select all of these. So I'm only selecting the photos that were given one star. And I'm going to click and drag them into the selects folder. So now they've been moved from our capture folder into our selects folder. So I can close out of Adobe Bridge. And if I go to selects here in my working drive, I can see, yes, here are the raw files. Uh, the XMP data is just the, um, the one star that we gave it. So after I've imported my photos to my capture folder and made my selects, I want to copy those photos onto my backup drive just to have a backup. Editing the photos takes some time, and in that time, if I were to lose the files or if something were to happen, I wanna make sure that I have a backup. So I'm gonna do this by selecting capture and selects and saying Command C to copy them. I'm going to open my backup drive and I'm gonna create a folder in the same way that I did previously. The year, the month, the date, the type of shoot, and the clients. And I'm going to paste those folders that I copied. Now, all of my images have been copied onto my backup drive and I know that I have a backup of all of those raw files. Okay, so now we are ready for the next step, which is Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new Lightroom catalog. Now I've done this a few different ways in the past. I've tried a few different things. In my personal opinion, I think it works best if you actually create a new Lightroom catalog for every photo shoot you do. It just keeps everything organized really tidy so that you don't end up with random Lightroom catalogs that aren't synced to photos and like you can't find a ca where your catalog is because a, one photo shoot was in a catalog, but where's that catalog? It just can get very messy. You can lose where your photos are. It just, it's a big headache. So I think to minimize that, it's easiest to just create a new Lightroom catalog for every photo shoot. That's my preferred way of working. You might disagree, um, but this is what I do. Lightroom is prompting me to, to create a new catalog because it can't find the last catalog. You could also go to file new catalog. Um, so I'm just gonna say, choose a different catalog and I'm going to say, create new catalog and I'm going to name it Virginia and Daniel. I'm going to make sure it's in our working drive in our Lightroom folder, great. And I'm gonna say create. And now Lightroom has created a catalog here. And if we go back to Finder, we can see that in Lightroom, we have our Lightroom catalog, great. So now we're going to move our selected images into our Lightroom catalog. So I can do this by making sure I'm in the library module in Lightroom. And then I'll just click and drag my selects folder these are the selected images that we made in Bridge. I'm gonna just click and drag that folder into Lightroom. I'm gonna make sure that this is selected to add images at the top. We want to add the images. We don't want to disrupt the file structure that we've created by moving the files. We just want to add them. We don't wanna copy them, we wanna add them. If you wanna add any sort of metadata, you can do that here. 
I will go ahead and say Zam, which is a preset I've made just to give myself copyright over these photos, and I'm going to say import, okay? So now Lightroom has imported the photos. You can see here they are. Now this is where I would edit them. So I'm going to say D for develop. And I might just apply like a quick preset. Um, let's see, maybe we'll call this fine and just bring down the highlights a little bit. Maybe bring down the exposure, bring up the shadows, bring up the exposure a little bit more. That's a before and that's after. We'll call that good. So I'm going to say Command C and copy these settings and I'm going to paste them onto this photo. Okay, and so now we'll say that we're done editing all of our photos. We're ready to export them. Before I export them, I name them here in Lightroom. So, um, and typically I'll also add keywords. So I'll say Zach Mendez, couple, Canon, Santa Barbara. Okay, yeah, whatever keywords you wanna use. I'm just using some random ones here. I've already applied my copyright and I'm gonna change the file name. Um, so I've just, I have all my photos selected. I'm clicking on file name here. Um, here's an example, which I've already input this information, but if you were starting from scratch, you would say edit. You would say your name. You could do this however you want, but this is how I do it. Z Mendez underscore client name, Virginia and Daniel underscore sequence zero one. I'm gonna say done, I'm gonna say okay. And now the files have been renamed. So if we click on them, we can see down here, it says Zeman does Virginia and Daniel 01.cr3, great. Now I'm ready to export these files. So I'm going to say command A, and I'm going to say file, export. Now Lightroom will open this export dialog. I've created a few user presets here, and the ones that I typically use our client low res and client high res. So these are, again, export presets that I've made to save myself time. Basically what it is is the high res photos are just the original size photos uh, at 300 uh, DPI, and the low res photos are sized to the long edge of 2048, just to make it a smaller file, but still relatively detailed. And that's how I export my files. Um, so I do a high res and a low res. I'm going to say batch export here. I'm going to choose my folder for my low res files. So I go back to my working drive, back to the main folder, to my export folder, and to my low res folder. Okay, I'm going to say choose. And then the same thing for the high res, working drive, main folder, export, and high res choose. So now we've selected where our exported files are going to end up, and I'm going to say export. And now Lightroom will export the files, and if I go to my main folder and I look in my export folder, I can see yes, here they are, they're named properly, um, and here they are, they're named properly, low res, exactly. Exactly what I wanted, now they're here. So now we've completed all the steps up to the export. All right, so now that we have exported all of our files, it is the time to deliver them to our clients. I used Pixie Set for a really long time to deliver client galleries, and I recently have moved to PickTime. These are videos all on their own, <laughs> these, these client delivery galleries, so I'm not gonna talk about those yet, but typically I would just upload the high resolution files to my client delivery service, whether it's PickTime or Pixie Set or whatever you use, and then deliver them to the clients. But I'm not quite done with, with my um, process yet because I want to make sure that I have a backup. So what I want to do now is make sure that I have copied all of my final files, my Lightroom catalog and my exported files to my backup drive. Earlier we copied over our capture folder and our selects folder. So I'm going to open up my backup drive. I'm going to do this by right clicking on backup and saying open a new tab. I'm just going to drag this tab out so we can see everything. So here is our folder that we made earlier. I'm just gonna select Lightroom and export from my working drive, and I'm gonna bring those over into my backup drive. This ensures that when I remove the main folder from my SSD drive to make space for my working drive, it just ensures that everything's gonna be 
correct and up to date on my backup drive. So I'm not quite done yet. I have one more backup to make. Um, and I do this by backing up my final exported images to the cloud. I use Dropbox for this. This is something that I recently started doing. So I'm gonna open, so I have Dropbox here open on my computer. This is the Dropbox um, desktop client, it syncs with Dropbox. So you can see here I have several folders, uh, client work, personal work, opera work for 2020 and 2021. So I'm gonna open the 2021 client work. And here I've already, this is the folder that I've already made for Virginia and Daniel, but I'm just gonna show you here again. So we'll do it in the same way, um, this naming structure. By the way, this naming structure is one that I learned from Julia Trotti. So if you don't know her, you should check her out. She's a really amazing photographer and YouTuber. You probably all know her already, but um, if you don't for some reason, check her out. She's amazing. So here I've made the same folder structure and I'm just going to drag over my export folder into this. Um, I'm only gonna bring in my exported final images to Dropbox just as a final, final backup um, in case any everything else should fail. So there you have it. That is how I manage my files. I know it's not the most exciting aspect of photography, but as I said, it's super, super important. It will make your life so much easier and pretty soon you will get so much pleasure out of having a really amazingly organized file system on your hard drives. It just makes it so much better. You have to do it, I promise. Um, if you have any questions about the way that I do this, please let me know if I'm doing something that can be improved on or if you have any tips and tricks, please let me know in the comments. As always, I appreciate the thumbs up and I appreciate the subscribes and all of that stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Love is free.